You have a lot of cars in here. people, how's it going? Oh, no, no, that's Let's not go, right. Go. Hey all you people, what's going on? We are up on the Kankamangas Highway driving the 2014 GTI. Last year for the Mark 6 GTI, Das Auto. Let me tell you the few reasons why I chose the GTI as my daily driver. Honest GTI ownership review. Like I said, most endings mean new beginnings, right? This was certainly the case when I financed a used GTI. It was my newest car ever, it was my first hatchback, it was my first four cylinder, it was my first turbocharged car, and it was my first German car. Das Auto. Now that I've been living with it for about half a year, I can make an honest assessment about what it's like to own this car. What do you think about this car, Sam? <laughs> It's very comfortable. I really am a fan of it. This is a smaller car than what I would think you would get, but I am very pleasantly surprised. It handles really well, and it's very comfortable, especially in the passenger seat. I don't know, yeah, this, this car seems to blend like practicality and fun very well. It's like a good balance of it, you know? Yeah, and this is the second car I learned to stick in, and yeah. I really liked it compared to the Mustang. I feel like it's better it was easier to handle and it's more comfortable. Yeah. I guess. It wasn't quite as daunting. Yeah. I guess. Okay, fair enough. Let's start why I chose this car as my daily driver. Here were my requirements when I was looking for a car. Number one, cost efficiency. This includes fuel efficiency, sticker price, and repairs and maintenance. 93 octane. The most expensive kind. The GTI isn't really the most fuel efficient in its segment, coming at like 27 or 28 MPG combined, but it is a massive leap forward from what I'm used to driving, which was like 17 and a half MPG. For me, that's an average saving of about 25 a week, 100 a month, or 1200 a year if you can do the math. I can do the math. Sometimes. <laughs> that's nearly a whole month's rent. I know, it's so sad. I bought this car for about 13 grand with 73,000 miles on it and it is in fantastic shape. As for the repairs and maintenance, the dealer had already replaced the turbo before I bought it due to a failed emissions test. And about four months later, it threw a code at me for an intake manifold runner, which pretty much means you need a whole new intake manifold. Again, this was covered by Volkswagen under the emissions warranty or something like that. So I guess the whole Dieselgate thing has the EPA keeping a real close wash on Volkswagen. Das Auto. Oh, ooh, there goes a Tesla P100D. With no lights at light. Number two, my other requirement was that it had to be fun to drive. So we've got a turbo, a six speed manual transmission, and pretty decent handling. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous, literally. Oh my gosh. <gasps> My third requirement was that it had to have some sort of culture and heritage, something that has some sort of lineage and had made it like a name for itself. And the car also had to have some strong aftermarket support so I could stay involved with customization if I wanted to. You car lovers know, and don't even deny it, it's really tough to keep yourself from looking at car listings all the time. You're like, I want this car, I want this car. It's just like, you kind of have to stop looking at the listings if you don't want to have that craving to get a new vehicle, right? You're not wrong. Not wrong. Oh, hello, YouTube. 
Well, here's a list of negative things about the GTI. And that concludes our list. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of things I do not like about the car. The interior is a little outdated. It's been around for a while, but this is literally the last year of the run for this Mark VI GTI. But if you just look at the instrument panel, I love the fact that they took the gauge cluster directly from Audi's. The red stitching, the red accents on the inside is just fantastic. And then you look at the LCD screen right there where the touch screen would be in the higher end trim levels. And you're just like, is this, is this 2002? I know German vehicles are not known for their electronics. Recent years, they've gotten a lot better, but this car is not an exception, especially without that infotainment center with the touch screen. It's a little more clumsy to hook up your phone to Bluetooth. And it's weird when I'm listening to music and say I get a phone call, it'll disconnect. And once I end the call, it doesn't go back to the music, but the stereo system in the car is awesome. I think it's an upgraded version from what you get in a standard Golf. So it's great for listening to Smash Mouth. Uh, it's great for smashing the like button. Um, it's... <laughs> <laughs> One thing I didn't mention while driving this car is the top speed limiter. From my experiences, uh, obviously on a close course, it limits it at 125 miles an hour. And this is just a tuning thing. You can get tunes that totally just take off that limiter. In the gearing in this car, sixth gear overdrive, you could reach 208 miles an hour. In theory. Unfortunately, it's like, you know, a really flat kind of egg hitting the wind, but it's, it's so, incredibly stable at high speeds. All right, let's see how this thing handles in these turns. This thing just like, it loves the turns. It stays very flat in the turns. This is an amazing compromise between comfort and handling. I love the low end torque in this engine. It just feels very manageable, but it's still really fun to drive. It's like you're pushing the car and the engine just feels like it can take a beating all day long. This thing feels like you could just power shift as your normal daily shifting. Situation. Si situation. Yes. All right, ready? Torque drops off around 5,900 RPMs, it feels like. It's like so exciting. But this thing just, it goes, man. For a little over 200 horsepower, this thing is ridiculously fast. Uh, I just don't like the sound of this exhaust. I want to change it out. You know what? Let's change it out. Go fund me. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Go fund Support me. me on Patreon. I have really cheap tires on this thing. They're like 60 bucks a pop. Maybe if I get like Michelin Pilot Cup, whatever the hex they are, um, or Goodyear Eagle Ones or something, it would probably take a little bit of slop slop out of the steering. Because right now, it just doesn't feel as connected as I would have thought from a GTI. Ooh, just, Sam, it just absorbs these bumps so well. Gets whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, okay. My gosh. Just hit the shock absorbers. <laughs> it literally shifted the camera when we hit that. <laughs> the brakes fade pretty quickly. So if I were to ever do some performance modifications, I'd probably have brakes pretty far up on the list. Before that though, I'd probably, I'd probably want to get like a new exhaust system. I'd like a stage two, but in Massachusetts, the whole catalytic converter restrictions are pretty strict. But like, meanwhile in Florida, you can get an inspection sticker on a moldy banana. <laughs> <laughs> That's not moldy, but. Aroma jokes, find your fuel. Um, anyhow, one of the main reasons why I got this car is because it it's supposed to be very good at handling, which is, which is true. It is. Always terrified to take turns, but everything turns out okay. Turns out okay. Uh, the Mustang had a lot more body lean. It's incredible how compliant this thing is over the bumps too, and we're testing that out here at the Kangamangas. Yeah, I just feel really safe. It inspires confidence. Is that the right term? But this thing just it just feels very very stable, even in the snow too. Hairpin curve coming up. Hairpin curve coming up. All right, let's see how this thing handles in the turn. I'm gonna really, oh <laughs> I'm gonna go into the turn and I'm gonna give it some gas because I think this car has a tendency to understeer. Hang on, because this front wheel drive, front wheel drive car is understeer. Yeah. Wow, that was good. It just starts to slide out in the front a little bit. When you push up to like nine tenths, it's a really good car. 
And after that, a little slop. The performance isn't crazy in this car. This two liter turbo four cylinder engine makes just over 200 horsepower and 207 turks. But a lot like the Mazda Miata and stuff, you can use the full band of power in the RPMs and not have to worry about going incredibly incriminating speeds. All right, I'm gonna do a zero to 100 test, turning my traction control off. All right. course with a professional driver don't try this at home god i'm gonna try it not a boosted launch because i don't want to spin my wheels all right and bad shift Day. In a more accessory standpoint, in the winter, it's very nice because it has heated seats. Which is surprising because this one has the plaid cloth seats. Yeah, compared to leather. Right, and you don't usually see cloth seats that are heated, so that was a really nice feature. I didn't even know it had that until I bought it. Makes it a little bit more cozy too. As compared to like the, the Ford Fiesta ST, those Recaro seats are fantastic. I would love to have those in here if they came in plaid. The front and back seats are very comfortable. I'm surprised most other cars this size would just be so low to the ground. The back seats where your knees would be up to your boobs. Ugh. And when the back seats fold down flat, there's plenty of room. Not quite enough you can sleep in there in a pinch. One of my biggest complaints with the drivetrain in this car, I have, I have a couple. The gear ratios is my biggest complaint, I think. First gear is so freaking short. You're probably going, you know, 6,000 RPMs at 25 miles an hour. It's nuts. Say you're, in theory, dry racing out of light. You're gonna spin because there's so much torque in first gear. Then you're gonna have to shift at a blink of an eye. So it's a little inconvenient. Another thing I don't like about the gear ratio is in sixth gear, overdrive, it's still way too short of a gear. So for instance, if I wanna cruise at 80 on the highway, I'm turning about 3,100 RPM. And this thing could achieve a lot better gas mileage if it just had that gear ratio. And this engine is so torquey down low that I don't think it would be much of an issue having a lower running RPM. As far as the shifter goes, it's okay. It's a little bit of slop side to side. Oh, another thing, I absolutely love the shifter knob. It's in the shape of a golf ball, which you know, Volkswagen Golf, <laughs> but it's so nice to just grip and hold in your hand. Oh, I love the steering wheel. It's just, it feels great. It has the red stitching on the inside here and it kind of gives you a little more texture and grip. My favorite interior design is the red threading over everything. They, they <laughs> actually did a great job differentiating it from the base Golf. Little quirky things that are just included in Volkswagens. They're so quirky, that company. When you go to open the trunk, you have to push in the emblem and open it up. It's just little things like that that remind you you're driving an ultra high performance track car. Overall though, I'm very impressed with the interior. It passes the flick test in most regards. Flick test. Good. Passed. Armrest is good. That didn't hurt at all. Up here. There. Flick test, good. Not bad. Right here. One odd thing is that the meteor connector cable that came in the center console is for the old generation iPhones and iPods. This is a 2014 car. They weren't even making that kind of connector anymore. I know I said this before with my 4Runner video, but I do plan on modifying this car. The goal is to keep it until it's completely paid off. So I mean it this time, please stay tuned because <laughs> we're gonna have upgrades. First modification, exhaust. Cause it sounds like crap. Dash is awesome. Dash is awesome. I named him Dash. 
like Dashiell Robert Parr from The Incredibles. Because he's really quick and he's small. And he is surely incredible. He is incredible. And he's cute, right? Can you see that? Whoa, that's sick. Okay. I ho silver! Away! <laughs>